All right, here I want to talk about a little bit about the the curve modifier uh, that I used quite a lot for for that model specifically. Uh, so I thought it would be cool to kind of go into details with a normal paste video. Um, so here uh, I'm gonna have uh, the little guard rail that goes uh, uh, around the hatch. So I'm basically starting off um, just a Bezier uh, curve. And yeah, sorry, the screen cast keys wasn't enabled. Um, but so here you can see that I'm uh, basically trying to have um, the curve to match the grid on, on the in the viewports. Uh, because that way, when I press control, uh, it's just gonna stick to uh, to the grid, and it's gonna be easier to have something uh, square, basically. Uh, so I use that quite a lot. Uh, it's pretty useful to to use the grid, uh, and so here you can see that I'm uh, basically uh, subdividing the spline, the the curve. Um, uh, that can feel unnecessary, but uh, it's because I'm going to need the subdivision uh, when I'm going to convert the um, the curve, uh, the basic curve in mesh. Uh, that way, I'm going to have the the subdivision I need for for the mesh to go around the the curve. So here, I'm bringing the the curve where I'm going to need it. Uh, Basically scanning it, you see, to match the the diameter of the other tubes because it's all they're all the same, so they need to match. Um, yeah, see, you have uh, I have the subdivision I'm gonna need. Yeah, no need to subdivide anymore. So here I converted it into mesh. Uh, now I'm basically creating the path that I'm gonna use for to create the, the quad rail. So just a, a simple circle. And so what's important with the curve modifier, it's kind of a pain when you don't know that, uh, is that you need um, your path and your objects to have the same uh, origin. Uh, so here you can see I'm uh, matching. I'm, I'm basically going to use the, the cursor. So here the cursor is matching uh, the origin of my object and then I can match the, the origin of my circle to the cursor. So once you have the curve applied, you have to uh, pick the right uh, axis and it's always a little, a little fucked up like that. At the beginning, you kind of have to play around. So you go in edit mode and you make sure you click the in the modifier uh, the little case uh, to have it enabled even in edit mode and, and then you can you can move it around so always in edit mode all right so here i'm just making sure it's in the right place where i want it and see the deformation is is just perfect i don't know how you would do that without that tool And so now what's great is that if you keep the modifier, the curve modifier, um, you don't collapse it. If you go in edit mode, you can uh, start adding objects. Uh, this is why I converted it into mesh, because you could keep the curve if you wanted. But I, I knew I was going to add more, uh, more objects to it. Um, so here I'm going to add uh, more uh, tubes. Um, so yeah, I would not uh, be able to do that if it was still a curve. So here in edit mode, I'm adding one and um, you can see that it's uh, it's popping in the, in the right position around the, the hatch. And 
and see that I'm uh, I'm still using the grid. It's still um, overlaying the grid, and it makes it a lot more simple. Yeah. And I can continue to add more elements to it. So here, the attachments for, for the rail. That's popping just right in the, in the right position. And you know, that allows you to work like that. It allows you to, it's it basically, it's non-destructive. You can, uh, uh, it's it's kind of like in Photoshop if you had all your layers uh, still, so you can come back and and have a process that is a lot cleaner like this than if you had everything collapsed and uh, you know you would have to pla place by hand uh, this um, little elements and it would be a pain you know to have it match uh, the right uh, the right angle the right position you know. To have the right zone of contacts um, so this is just to show you how um, how I use that tool but it's uh, I mean for that object I used it in a lot of places see here I'm really just trying to have no um, empty space because you know it's supposed to be like the surfaces are supposed to touch each other again I don't know how how um, necessary it is to do that but I know my images are going to be pretty high resolution so I, I want this uh, these small details to be accurate All right, and uh, so I just duplicated it and uh, flash forward, uh, boom, it's, uh, it's done.